What's up, everyone? Kristen here. Thank you for joining us for the final episode of our Monster of the Week mini campaign. I am so excited for you to hear how our story wraps up. I want to say an extra thank you to our players, Diana, Gemma, Jess, and AJ, as well as our amazing GM, Morgan. This Monster of the Week mini campaign was a joy to play, and I hope that you've enjoyed listening to it half as much as we all enjoyed playing it. Coming up next on Powered by the Players is an Escape from Dino Island one-shot, followed by a mini campaign of Crossroads Carnival. One last thing before we get into the finale. I want to take a moment to tell you about a podcast called Polidarity Forever. Polidarity Forever is a review podcast of a review podcast, specifically of the second episode of Till Death Do Us Blart, brought to you by the Sinister Parent Company Podcast Network. In honor of the hosts of My Brother, My Brother, and Me, and The Worst Idea of All Time, watching Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 and reviewing it every year on Thanksgiving for the hit podcast Till Death Do Us Blart, the fine folks at the Sinister Parent Company stand in polidarity, see what they did there, and review the second episode of their podcast every year on Christmas. Join them over on the RSS feed of the podcast Good Idea, where this episode of Polidarity Forever will be made available for your listening pleasure. And with all that out of the way, let's join our monster hunters on the beach for their final showdown. And then the singing starts. And you already see people who are swaying and jamming and like having a good time. Talon and Mallory, what did y'all end up? Are y'all staying sort of like off to the side or? We have to be there because I think we we haven't unveiled the mirrors, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think we're, I think it makes most sense for us to each be on different sides of the stage. And I think as um, the music is happening and the swelling is all that, um, uh, Brooke sees you, Don, gives you a smile, a little wink, and, I smile um, back. and starts singing with um, Sky as well. So you do hear through the muffled sounds, you do another voice being added in. And you do see the swaying happening and people just, just jamming out, having a good time. And you do see some people actually starting to dance and move. And it looks like they're dancing and moving in closer to the water, like the the like um, here's the stage and you do see slow, the, the crowd slowly starting to split around the stage as, a, as people are just like sort of just swaying and dancing to the beat and it's, they're slowly moving closer to the water. I think what I do in this instant is I shoot Brooke a finger gun and I'm hoping that my fellow friends yeah. have recognized the cue. The signal, yeah. Talon and Mel are dramatically trying to rip off canvas covers. Yeah, as they're being pulled off. Yeah, just the reflections starting to come through. And there's some stage lighting as well that's facing the band. Sure. So, of course, because you need to see them in the darkness of night. But how you set up the mirrors allows this light to easily show who they are. Like how Mm -hmm. you set the mirrors actually reflects who they are. And it isn't like a change or an instant or anything like that whenever the reveal happens, it's just automatically that instead of their human selves show up in the reflection and it fades away, it's just automatically them as their f- true fishy selves um, with their flattened noses that sort of like have like little slits, the scales that go up the head, no hair. Um, and you do see that the hands and the feet are a little bit webbed. You see that the fingers are still able to work a guitar and the drums and all that and a bass. But yeah, you do see like the little webby bits in the mirror. And see, seeing that as some of the people are looking and not completely eyes closed, people stop in shock and horror. And I think it's the majority of the, the people that stop because some people have walked past the mirrors at this point just, just a little bit. Maybe there's like by people that still need to be scooped up and wrangled um, that are still going off to the water. Um, but the rest of them, they, they, they all stop and they're just looking with this horror and 
concern and confusion as they're looking at the mirrors and looking back at the crew and then looking back at the mirrors and looking back at the group. And I think as you're seeing people stop dancing. I would like to use some force magic to like, I just, I think what I do is I use my index finger and I just like kind of swipe to the left and the microphone stand falls out from under her. Nice. Yes. Okay. Give me some use magic just so we can see what you do. Oh, that's bad. That was a three. Instead of it going the way you want to, because with natural elements like wind and stuff, sometimes they do their own thing. And so you try to swipe it over, but instead you like swipe over some sand right in front of you. So it doesn't really get to that far range of hitting the microphone. Isabella doesn't want the agency to have to do a lot of cover up work tomorrow. Uh Uh, So I think that she says to a few people nearby her who she can hear. I think it's a, it's a couple, it's like two guys. And I think she says, Oh my gosh, they, they must be sick. They must be sick with that flu. This is terrible in hopes that it will, s- not that the flu will spread, in hopes that the news will spread and people will leave and leave even faster. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, then so they start passing that word on. And I think maybe about 10 people had out. So a, a good portion leaves. And and I think uh, Sky's like, look, we're going to fix this. Just give us give us a minute. We'll be right back. And you see them sort of, like, turn off the mics just so they can talk private, like, on the stage and sort of huddle. Mm-hmm. And you hear them chattering. And there's some people still staying. There's, I think, maybe three more people leave. So it's, like, okay. 12. And the people that were towards the water and they got in camera, you can see this because you're right at the water's mm-hmm. edge. You see some people that were dancing sort of just stop dancing right at the water's edge. And they look around confused. Cam just breathes a sigh of relief. <laughs> Don't you have like a storm power or something? I do. Yeah, that is my my element. If you want to maybe draw people away or like force them away because there's a storm coming. Yeah, that's what I guess that's what I was thinking. So you want to manifest a, a storm? Yeah. So how are we doing that? It's going to have to be um, use magic for sure. Um, I think the trade off is going to be if it will be a specific side effect or danger, which means that if you do cause a massive storm, if not properly done, there may be a uh, like a big tidal wave that comes in and takes some of the people with them. Okay, so I rolled. Oh, okay. I rolled an eight plus my and then plus my weird makes it to ten, and then it turned into eleven with Dawn's help. Excellent. 10 plus the magic works without issues. Choose your effect. So I think it's still going to have a side effect where um, the water's going to get a little choppy. Okay. And a little rough where the waves are going to be crashing a little bit harder. So there'll just be a danger of the water maybe just coming a little. Kind of going over me. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, your ex- describe what you're doing mm-hmm. and what, what everybody sees. Cam was waiting at like right at the right at the, the like the shore, maybe like so. Here's this androgynous looking rocker looking person with like plaid pants rolled up to maybe their calves, metal accessories kind of around, and they're just standing in the water, kind of looking opposite way of the stage, and um and they're holding a staff like a metal staff and um. Their legs are spread apart. The cam closes their eyes, takes a deep breath, and, you know, kind of thinks of talents and Dawn's, like, reassurances. It's like, yeah, you got this. And, like, they're just like, yeah, I got this. Just, just, do, just do the forms. Brain, brain and body, brain and body. And they open their eyes, strikes the staff in the water, and then, like, does a wide stance with their arm, with the staff, like, um, outstretched and starts doing katas of, like, twirling the staff and doing these forms. And for just more visuals, um, now that Jess did mention, like, airbender stuff, like, I feel like it's a f- mix between, like, earthbending and fire where the legs are grounded wide 
and just like steady to keep them grounded. And then their arm and like Cam's arms are just flowing and just like kind of like this way, this moves of like controlling the, 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 the elements to what they want to do. So they're kind of just doing that. And then um, I guess one of the last moves is pointing the staff up into the sky. And like, that's, they use that as a way of like directing where they want the the lightning to strike and it's like towards the equipment and like like backstage and stuff like that so i think as you're moving around and building all this up as we're as if someone was watching you from like watching you do do this amazing kata at the water they see the the out of nowhere these uh, clouds starting to form and pile and grow larger with the flickers of lightning within the cloud itself and starting to spread up slowly towards the stage and to the boardwalk and um there's just rumbles of thunder in the background and as soon as you point your uh, staff up uh, just a big thing of lightning just cracks down and um where where exactly are you pointing it to I want to say, so the staff is up, mm-hmm. but then they direct it and use their other hand to kind of point at, uh, so the way I'm imagining it, like the back, the backstage of their little, the boardwalk area, that's where all the cables are running and like, like there. the big so, like surge protector. Yeah. So I'm aiming it more at the backstage rather okay. than anything at the front. Yeah. I think as you do and um, have all that sort of come down. And I think at first the lightning looks like it's coming straight towards you, but as soon as you point, it's where it curves and arcs in the direction you want it. And it hits that surge protector or where all the plugs are and just zaps it. And all of a sudden you see all the light bulbs in the, um, from the lights itself just burst out. You see the light also arc off into the boardwalk as well. And then you see the darkness of the whole boardwalk going dark. And um, I think just because of the force, because you know when, lightning hits and the thunder rumbles and you feel it shaking your walls. I think with that, as another side effect, all the mirrors shatter. Oops. But, um, yeah. And with all that, people are just trying to quickly go hide for cover. And I think that's how you get rid of the rest of the, the, the crowd. And I think with the lightning, uh, they, the ones on the stage obviously jump because they're like, what the fuck just happened? And they're looking around and they see it and they see the people running off and they're just like, you can see the frustration building upon their faces. And even if it's pretty dark, there's still some like light reflections from the city itself and you can see it. And they're looking around to see who, what, where, what, what's behind this. Well, this has been a strange string of events. I think it, Brooke, Brooke looks at you and she's like confused. Why are you still here? And you're not running. And she's like, what are you still doing here? Like, are, do you just stay for me? Well, you do owe me a mixtape. Well, we'll see what we can do. We're just having a little technical issues. Oh, honey. Isabella has her gun out too, but it's not pointed at anybody. Oh, I think um, as soon as they see the, that you have a gun, I think Beck, who is the identical twin brother of um, Brooke, uh, sort of just gives you a glare and then I think he knows what's going to happen like he just sees like oh you got a gun okay it's on and you see him just shift you just see the illusion fade and he turns into his real real form and you see that uh, with um, the webbed hands they actually have like these like longer claws as mm-hmm. well and then he just sort of like does like a growl hiss sort of thing and you see that the teeth are all like the sharp, pointy, like multiple rows of sharp, pointy teeth. Yeah, Isabella's gonna shoot him. Uh, give me a kick some ass. Okay, that is a seven. On a seven plus, you and whatever you're fighting inflict harm on each other. Mm-hmm. Um, the amount of harm is based on the established dangers of the game. That usually means you inflict the harm rating of your weapon and your enemy to inflict the, the harm rating on you. So mm-hmm. I think because you have a gun and your expertise, I think that's a plus two would you say like a i don't think we really established what what the the hit points were 
or anything. Um, yeah. Does the book say anything? I'm looking at my weapons? I'm looking at my playbook because I. Oh yeah, here we go. Do 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 plus two, uh, two harm close loud. Okay. I'm glad. Question: What does she roll again? Uh, tough. Oh, she didn't make the physical roll yet. Oh, it's kicks mass. Yes, kicks mass. I will kicks mass plus tough, mm -hmm. or kicks mass is plus tough. Yeah. Um, so, and now, do you roll? F you don't roll for harm, right? It's just two I harm. Uh, yeah, I don't roll. I don't roll. <laughs> yeah, it's just harm. Okay, so yeah. two harm. Yeah. So as you do that, you you do realize that um. And so real quick, real quick, just uh, just so we can get a, a, a view of what's happening. Wh where do you hit on, on, on his? He's going to hit me as well. Oh, right? I'm, I'm going to get to that. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just trying to set the scene. I was just trying to set it up. So if he's going to hit me as well. I think he's running toward, he bounce, he like, as he sees that and he sees you have a gun and he shifts into his form. Yeah. He's, he jumps off the stage and starts running towards you. Okay. And I think that's when you shoot him. Okay. Where do you? Where you hit? I'm aiming for body. So maybe in the shoulder is where you hit him? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you clip him in the shoulder and um and you see that at first that it actually looks like it's um a bit to sink in. Mm -hmm. So um just because I think the skulls themselves have a little bit of, of an armor. Now he's up in your business. So just just let you know. Let's go to Dawn because Dawn's the closest one as well. I think I'm going to look over what happened with them and then look back at Brooke and be, uh, just say, uh, terribly sorry about all this, and then knock her on her ass with force magic. All right, give me a, a use magic roll. Just knock her directly backwards. Maybe she falls off the platform. Uh, that is a 10 plus 3. Added benefit to this. I'm going to say trap a specific person or monster. So I think when she falls off the stage, she kind of, like, sinks into the sand a little bit. Okay, I will do one better for you. Um, as you're, uh, you do this magic and you knock her down and she goes acerbate tea kettles and she stumbles a bit and she's thrown um, off into the sand. I think you pick up some of the, the, the drums as well and they just land right on top of her. Excellent, send her right to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> she's She's got knocked over I, and I think with that, you catch the attention of Sky. And I think Sky is going to start running towards you. I think I want to use my sneaky, which means when I come from behind, mm -hmm. I get to inflict two plus harm. Nice. I got a seven. You hit good. You get like a good uh, blast. And I think because you were able to sneak up and like catch him close range yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. You are, you blast. I think, where do you want to hit? Uh, I'm going to go. No kill, but you you I'm do gonna, a you do I'm, a thing. I'm gonna do shoulder area. All right. I'm gonna take out this area, like the shoulder right. area. So, like your sister, you also hit in the shoulder. But you're, <laughs> runs in the family, and um, yeah, you're able to hit, and uh, but with a plus seven, that means they also inflict harm on you as well. Okay. Uh, so I think as, uh, cause you're moving closer and you're being sneaky mm -hmm, sure. and you're able to get close range, that bullet just tears through, uh, the shoulder mm -hmm. towards the front and you hear them like scream and hiss and they turn around and they see you and they just, um, I think go to slash, they slash at you as well okay. and they're able to catch you. Um, I'm going to say right across the shoulder chest area Okay. and you get a plus two harm. So. Okay. Do you Goodbye. have armor as well, or no? No, I have no armor. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing I'm wearing a hoodie. That's that doesn't protect you, unfortunately. <laughs> no, now my hoodie is ruined. Yes, your hoodie is ruined. And I'm bitter. <laughs> Talon, what are you doing? I'm less worried about Isabella. Isabella's got fair <laughs> badass, right? So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna help Mal. Okay. I'm gonna slide across the stage. And I want to shoot the stage. Okay. In order to cause like them to step away from Mal. And I'm going to position myself to have my sword ready to stab. You shoot at the, the, uh, the, the ground, like I guess in front of the, both of them. Yeah. And so 
a uh, sky steps back and in their monstrous form and they, they look and they hiss at you and they look at uh, Mallory and they see that they're damaged. So they're going to start like, I guess, focusing their, their next attack on you. Mm-hmm. Um, Cameron, what you doing? I feel like I'm, well, I am still separated from the group. I feel you're, like. you're by the water still. So yeah. yeah, after, yeah, after the spell cast, I'm going to kind of rush over to see what's happening. And then now that I know that shit's going down, I think Cam will, Cam will try to um, use magic and blast one of the fan members. I want to say Brooke because Brooke is the only one I keep remembering, but. It's Brooke, Beck, or Sky. Sky's the one that is with uh, Mallory on the stage. Um, Beck is one one fighting Isabella and Brooke is the one underneath all the drums. Okay, I want to, uh, I think it's Sky then, the one that's by Mal. Okay. Yeah, I'll blast. I'll blast right. them. All right, blast. so I guess, are you still doing a use magic if um, that? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a use magic, but. Right. Give me yeah. a use magic. Total is five. Well, first, mark experience. Secondly, don't you have a thing if your magic backfires? When you miss a use magic roll, you can choose one of the following options. Uh Fizzle, the preparations and materials for the spell are ruined. You'll have to start from scratch. And this is going to suck. The effect happens, but you trigger all the listed glitches, but one. You pick the one you avoid. I kind of want to do the this is going to suck option. I will avoid the the effect is weakened. So I'm in the area now, and I see that Mal is in, like, skirmishing. So, um... I'm a, like, I feel like the storm clouds are still nearby. So it's more of a, like, using the staff and then doing Marshall. the pointy thing again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you point and you shoot the the lightning at the plate at, at them. Mm-hmm. So it hits. Uh, I think they, they do get charred a bit from it. However, it's just a quick flash of lightning, not like a big old shock like it was before. Uh, with that. You take one harm, ignore armor, as one of the lightning strikes arc back and hits you. So you get a little, you get a little buzzed as well. Uh, with that, the magic draws immediate and welcome attention. Sky sees that you're the one who did it because they saw you direct the lightning towards them. And a problematic side effect: the stage is now on fire. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you see flames in the stage starting to smoke as the flames are starting to flicker um, in that that area. I think currently right now, Brooke is busy digging herself out of the, the drums. So it's going to take her a bit before she's, she's free. Okay, I'm going to shoot at him again since we know that the silver bullets are probably the best way. I also have a knife. Yay. Okay, that's a nine plus one, so ten. I think as... Um, He's reeling and he slashed at you and you're pulling up your gun. You were able to line it up perfectly with his chest. Mm -hmm. Do do you, do you go for the heart? Yeah. It's a monster. I don't have any moral issues about (laughs) about taking out the monster. Yes. Yeah. And you fire and it goes straight through the chest and you see him like sort of stop and pause. Mm -hmm. And you just see these like, black veins sort of just like from that wound itself sort of crawl across the skin up his face and you see his eyes just go completely black Mm -hmm. and you just see the body just collapse to the ground okay that's that's one down i think that's what isabella says by the way one down okay one down (laughs) don you're over on the other side of the stage away from brooke what are you I'm going to yell back, one up. And uh, the damage done to Mallory would have been enough. And now that uh, Sky is going after Cam, uh, the wings unfurl. I charge at Sky, pick her up, fly her up, and drop her on the stage into the fire. Uh, give me a kick some ass. Because you are indeed kicking some ass. Oh, no, that's a four. <laughs> okay, so, so, um... so you just lift them up a little bit <laughs> i think i think they see you coming because you have a you're you're yelling and you have a tail so they duck under as you try to grab them and i saw past like i try 
Mallory, was it right? Is that the order we somehow taken? Yeah. Of course, we don't have to go in the exact same order, just whatever is easier for you. Yeah. Um, so Don, Don dropped them or d- didn't Don, grab Don didn't I missed. Missed. Okay. A big, old wh- a big old whiff. And I'm going to shoot that siren. Give me a kick some ass. I'm going to try to kick some ass. Oh, that's a four. You just miss because I think you're in so much pain. And I don't know if you're as experienced shooting with your offhand as um, you, you think you are. <laughs> I'm going to say that Mal being Mal practices an equal amount with both hands. Okay, fair. However, uh, Mal has no uh, battlefield experience. Fair. I think just nerves get you. and um, Totally. And uh, yeah, you just, you just miss. And I think with that, it leaves you open. And so sky seeing you uh shoot at them um they turn around and they slash at you again and so they get you in in um the side not on the, sh- the same side but in in the side of the torso talon you see you see what happened you see all these wings and misses and this is unacceptable <laughs> like i'm i need to slash somebody so i'm gonna go in and help mal all right taking your sword Hell fucking yes. All Sorry. right. Give, give me some, some <clears throat> kick some ass. Yes. Let me kick some ass. Rolling that plus tough. Roll 2d6. Got an 11. So there's yeah. a 10. Yes. What? <clears throat> yeah. Bam, 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 bam. I'm coming in. Running, dashing, slow-mo. Sword in hand. Ready to slash and stab. All right. And... With uh-huh. ancient fighting arts, because I'm the initiate of a secret order, uh, the sword normally does two harm, and I get a plus one, and I get another plus one if I'm helping someone out. On top of that, you choose an extra effect. <laughs> you either gain advantage, plus one forward, or give plus one to another hunter. You inflict terrible harm, which is an extra plus one. You suffer less harm, and are you, f- and are you forced them where you want them to be? Do you want to go all the way and just? Um, I do don't know do? if I, well, I don't know how much damage it is. So I think what I want to do is the last one. I want to pin them down. I want to force them where I want them to be. So if okay. I stab them, I'm going to stab them and they can't get up. They're going to be stuck, stabbed to the ground. Fair. All right. Yeah. You're, I, where, where are you pinning them exactly? Like where, where's the sword going through currently? I'm going to aim under their floating rib. Nice. So I don't, yeah, I don't think at the moment I can pierce a heart in the, in the, the kinetics of where everyone is in positioning. So I want to, I can get them through the back under the floating rib and down onto the ground. Nice. So that's what you do. You're able to come up from behind and with your sword and your expertise of like knowing where to hit. We're able to get them, yeah, and get them down, and they are screaming in pain as uh, the silver is no bueno. And, yeah, you see them trying to claw and, like, swing at you, and I think they just barely miss you. I'm not sorry. You don't have to be. Um, Cameron. I see Mal getting injured again. So I think I want to, I think Cam will just yell out Mel and kind of run, like be by uh, her side. And uh, I want to cast, um, I want to cast wall, use magic and use, and uh, so that there's some sort of like barrier to surround us when Sky or whoever. What does this barrier look like? My first thought is just this, um, I kind of want it to be like a, like a sphere and it kind of just has this crackling effect. So you can't really see it per se, but in certain instances, you see like crackling around like like around us. All right. So it's like a little dome that you're all both in and um, a 
Thunderdome. I was going to say that. I was thinking I it. Did I, it. Yeah. I love, love the action frames. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Yeah. So you're able to put a, uh, a barrier between the world and you and Mallory. Sure. Yeah. So I think at this point, Brooke is able to like uh, get herself out of the um, the sand and underneath from underneath all the uh, drums, screaming in frustration, just very upset about what's going on. And um, she sees that you've landed next to her, um, Don. I think she's going to lunge towards you, Don. If I can maybe use like some force magic to shove her out of the way. Yeah. Just give me a use magic roll, please. Yep. Put in the other dice away because they were not good. Uh, that's a that is a eleven. All right. On a ten plus, the magic works without issue. Choose your effect. So, are you looking to just basically push her, or are you looking to cause damage, or? Uh. In this instance, I think I'm just looking to get her away from both me and, like, anyone else that she could possibly target if I shove her in that direction. All right. I think um, as she's jumping and she's lunging at you, um, as, like, she's jumping at you and she's almost, like, touching you. But you're able to, like, throw your wind up and, like, push her away and she just flies back and... um, I think she goes in the direction where Isabella is, but she flies bat- past Isabella and lands like maybe like 10 feet away. How bad is Mal hurt? Pretty bleeding, bleeding pretty, pretty bad. Um, oh man. Okay. Yeah. Sisterly instincts. I know. Yeah. So uh, Isabella is going to go to, to Mallory and uh, take out their first aid kit, which maybe it was in the inside of the suit jacket. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of where a full first aid kit would be on this like suit that I'm wearing. In my um, backpack. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Let me roll for medic. Eight, nine, uh, nine. Cause I have plus two to cool. Okay. So what is med- so, medic? Do? Medic is. Do, 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 do. Okay, on a 10 plus, not relevant. On a 7 to 9, choose one. Heal to harm or stabilize the injury. So I'll heal to harm. A talon. You've got, you've got this one penned right where you want them. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I haven't put away my gun yet from the other hand. Nope. So uh, if everyone's okay with it, I think I will take the pistol and aim for the heart. I'm going to say you're just, I'm not even going to have your roll for it because it's a pinned close range. Ooh. You know where the heart is and bull, the bullet goes off and it goes straight through. And then like with Beck, you see the black line sort of just like crawling and creeping up the face. And with that, I think Brooke is climbing to her feet. And at this point, I think she's transformed. She, the illusions fade away on her as well. And she just looks up and she's growl she just lets out this like primal scream and she just starts charging towards dawn you're the one who's been blasting her away she's just gonna start charging towards you i'm just gonna give a cheeky wave say goodbye brooke and i will force magic down (laughs) on top of her nice uh give me a use magic gun Ooh, (laughs) that that was a snake eyes (laughs) I think you do it, but it's not as strong as you want it to be. Okay. Yep. Does that sound good? Yeah, okay. that sounds good. Yeah, I just, you just, you, you push it and the sand just sort of like ripples around her like the wind is being forced. But um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't push her into Does the Does not impede earth, her like, at all. No. <laughs> and with that, she's going to actually jump up and uh, I guess grab you and like bring you down to the ground. And um, with that, you're going to take plus two harm as the claws sort of dig into your sides where she grabbed you. Now you're entangled with with her. Oh, are Isabella and Talon going to race to see who's going to finish off the last person? Because haven't we each taken out one? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yes, the rivalry is real. (laughs) Don't look at each other and then like sort of just sight. I love that. Uh, Yeah, 100%. 
So Talon, what are you doing? So Talon sees the urgency and feels really bad. I'm like, Don, Don deserves better than this. So I'm going to, as I'm cleaning up the sword, I, I start running towards, they're entangled in the sand, right? They're not yeah. like sky battling mm-hmm. right now. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Brooke dragged him down to Terra Verde and, and dug her claws into him. Now, is it like a rolling tussling or? I would say it's a rolling tussling. Okay, that's what I was afraid of. So I'm gonna charge straight for it and then and just dive, like body slam them and shoulder try to shoulder check <clears throat> um, the last siren standing. All right, and just to get them disentangled. Give me a give me a kicks my ass. All right, <clears throat> that's that's. Uh... Great. <laughs> That's a seven with the, the tough minus one is a six. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Maybe maybe the sand diving wasn't the best maybe choice. I think because they were tussling and rolling around, you just miss. And so you That's just fair. eat sand. Yeah. Tasty. Mm. And mm. take experience. Sand. Uh can I just pull her off of him? Yeah. You just roll me the kick's mass, and that's what if that's what we're doing, that's what we're doing. It's just okay. you pulling. Yeah. 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 Seven. Oh, Seven? Wait, okay. Yeah. So um with my plus one. Yeah. So eight. Yeah. Um that usually means you inflict harm rating. So you're not really doing harm per se. You're just sort of, I guess, grabbing and pulling. Mm-hmm. So I think as um you're grabbing and pulling and she slashes at you, but since you have all that protectiveness to you. It doesn't hit you at all, but you're a, you're able to separate the two. As okay. um, yeah, I'd like to say that I kind of grab her underneath the arms and then fall back so that I can hold her and then ask Don because this is Brooke, right? The yeah. one that Don has this like pretend little flirty thing with. So then Isabella is going to ask Don, um, what what do you want to do with this one? Oh, I, I plan to take her to Garbo Town for sure. I that was all a ruse that I was playing with her. <laughs> oh, well, I was. Oh, well, I was convinced. We'll have to talk about that later. That was very convincing. All right. Well, she's all yours. All right. And um, Cameron and Mallory, you're actually Mallory. You're feeling better. You're not unstable anymore, so you are able to move around and do things. It hurts like hell, but yeah, uh, yeah you're you're patched up a bit, so you're back in the fight. Uh, I think I'm just kind of following Isabella almost in a way that Isabella's kind of like my shield, but now like I'm battle worn. So I'm apprehensive to shoot. So I'm like, literally like, just like trying to follow behind Isabella. So Isabella right now is actually on her back with uh, Brooke on top of her, right? She with probably your arms looks- locked in. She probably looks up and sees Mal standing, like yep. up like backwards, and I'm like, one hundred percent. So and- you do have a clear shot to um, Brooke. However, if you do shoot, you may hit Isabella underneath. Mm-hmm. You do know Isabella does wear protection, but at the same time, like, do you risk it for the biscuit? You know, like- headshots. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make a calculated risk and shoot Brooke in the leg. I love how you always go for the leg; it's fantastic, never change. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about you, as in Diana, the player. Yeah. No, I like to go for the knee. The knee is just a very effective way to take people out. Yep. Yep. Uh, All right. Like, Romy, Romy, some kicks my ass. I'm gonna kick some ass. Maybe I'll kick some ass. Ooh, I got an eight. Yeah. All right, yeah, you're able to kick some ass. You're able to shoot her right in the leg, um, wailing in pain and screaming. She tries to swipe at you, but just because uh, Isabella is pinning her down, like she misses completely like, by like a foot. So, but uh, Cameron, everybody's out of your bubble. <laughs> My bubble is gone. Bubble's um, empty. Brooke is still alive. Yep, being pinned down, down by Isabella and currently shot by Mallory. <sighs> I too will take a calculated risk. Okay. And use magic and kind of use the remnant of my um I'm sure the the wall is fading already, mm-hmm. but I kind of want to use it and do like a a fire bending thing where I kind of 
punch through the the wall and have that have the force of it like blast i rolled a nine and then with weird it's 11. nice yeah so 10 plus um the magic works without issue choose your effect so what kind of effect are you doing i want to inflict harm all of a sudden isabella you feel them like sort of like jerking around like they've just been shocked i'll let brooke go all right uh, brooke's uh absence isabella let go of her brooke's there just sort of like still twitching from the electricity what do we do i mean i i don't imagine that if she makes it out of this experience alive it will end well for anyone else especially who wants to do the honors though i feel like it's almost personal if dawn does it <laughs> perfect do it dawn do you use a gun or do you use a stake or- does anyone have a stake i can use <laughs> i just have my staff but i was thinking force magic but if like uh if you think a stake will work better I have a knife. I I also have my gun. Oh. I have a grenade. Is that? You can have my telescopic sword if you want. Excellent. I'll just take the knife and plunge it right between her eyes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> as as you see the the dark the dark inkiness sort of just like sort of sprout and like the veins sort of like come down her face and her eyes turn black and she just stops moving. That was a choice, Don. Yeah, well, I honestly didn't care what happened to her. I think as this conversation started, basically as soon as Don stabbed uh, Brooke, uh, mm-hmm. Isabella pulled out her sidekick and turned around to m- make a call uh, while you all have this conversation. And then when the conversation's done, then she'll, she'll be done with her call. Is it a cleanup crew call? All right, yeah. So Isabella called cleanup crew. Um, mm-hmm. Within five minutes, there's a black van that pulls up uh, onto the beach because they have a special license that allows them to drive on the beach. Um, and then you just see these uh, these generic people just in um, black slacks, black button downs, and black caps just come out of the uh, with uh, black final gloves on, pop out, open the back of the van, and just start cleaning up the bodies. I yeah. think I think I need to eat and seek additional medical attention. Oh, goodness, yes. You you got hurt very badly. Are you okay? Well, I'm not in danger of death currently. I should seek additional medical treatment. Yeah, I think the cleanup crew would come with a a medic. They do. So that you don't have to go to a hospital and explain where you got these. Oh, nice. Yeah, that would... (laughs) Yeah, I think it's the... There's. I'm going to say there's four people overall... um, Three of them are uh, help picking up bodies and like covering up evidence of creatures. Mm -hmm. And the 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 fourth one comes over and checks all out and sees that Mallory's injured and starts, you know, at least taking care of that. Yeah, cleaning out your wounds. Uh, Just because the claws marked are pretty wide, uh, stitch them together because you're gonna need some stitches. And I I would say as soon as they got there and they were able to patch up within five minutes and they were out they were out within another five. Mm -hmm. so five in, five out. Should we go get some pie? We I would should. love pie. Mallory, you need food. Yes, the meds they gave me, they told me to take with food. Did you take them already? No. Okay. I'm just making sure. I know how to properly take my medication, Isabella. <sighs> I'm glad and to with see that, that you're not very injured. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say, and with that, we cut to the pie scene. But <laughs> right. We do. <laughs> it's like the Avengers after the first movie. The swarm. Yeah. The swarm. <laughs> yes. We're so exhausted we're, and pooped out, and we're just, we're just eating. slowly yep. doing in silence. And that's it for this week's episode of Monster of the Week. Our cast is Gemma as Cameron, Jess as Talon, AJ as Don Donovan, Diana as Mallory, Kristen as Isabella, and Morgan as the Keeper.
you creep through the lush forest, past a bubbling brook. Suddenly, a twig snaps behind you and you draw your sword. Your neutron pistol shakes in your hand as you step into the abandoned starport. You try to ping the captain, but the comms are dead. Then you see her. Under the streetlight, a woman smoking a cigarette. Her sly smile reminds you of The Witness. She draws bullets in the dirt. Chestnut whinnies you hot Taylor, but not before your arm tastes hot lead. Many Realms is an actual play RPG podcast with short campaigns and a variety of systems. Where to next? <laughs>